Okay, so this is this issue of opportunity cost. We're going to go 225 um, all the way till, I think, maybe 230. I'm not sure, but we'll keep going. So um, you have, again, I hope you've read the question. Opportunity cost is really the alternative benefit for gone. You, 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 because you chose to do something, what have you lost out on fundamentally? And when making choices, we should always make the better choice so that the, the choice we chose not to do is not as good as the, the first choice we made. <clears throat> right, so so let's look at the scenario here. You have a, and when we do this, everything we do here, we completely ignore fixed costs. We're not interested in the fixed costs. They just don't help us in making good decisions. They don't help us in making good decisions because we're making decisions per unit. Fixed costs don't really come into that. And besides, they're just fixed. Um, they might already have been covered. So how does that meet, how does that affect us when we're now dealing in a scenario where we're not dealing with when we've covered our fixed costs. Typically, these costs were made in the short term. These are short term. These are all short term decision making tools. So anyway, they because of that, that's given that we can exclude fixed costs. Right. Anyway, let's look at order A. So order A giving you a price of ten, variable cost of five. So the contribution is five. Right. So you can't do both. Um, cost of B eighteen. Sorry, revenue from B18, cost is 8, giving you contribution of 10. So we can make 500 pots of A, or we can make 60 kettles of B. So we can get 600 from B, or 500 from A. So here's the thing. It says the company decides to accept order A. Well, if you make order A, you're going to get contribution of 500, but you'd be losing out on contribution of 600 makes no sense so in effect the opportunity cost of that decision you make this the, the benefit for gone the alternative for gone is um, if you like opportunity B so you lose out on the 600 pounds that's as straight as it as it as it goes with this understanding of opportunity cost 226 you might remember we discussed this and um, please go back to the text I think it might be in uh, I don't know if you, you if you go through the the workbooks and you can find the lecture on it. But we discuss this issue of relevance. So there's a couple of key things here. First of all, when you do this kind of question, we never ever use the um, original cost of buying the stock where it says originally, but we never use it at all for anything. That's never the issue. The issue here is that because the issue this issue really comes from the idea that oh, if we already have stock that's gone, that we're not using for something else and we need it, well, it's sort of free. There's nothing that's free. Well, there's an opportunity there. We could sell it. So in effect, that we're losing out on that if we give it to someone. Let me explain with this question. This business needs 2,000 kilograms of gravel for a special project. They need 2,000 kilograms. They currently have 1,200 kilograms of gravel in stock, and they can't use it for anything else. So you could argue, well, just give it to these guys. So if you give it to them, then technically you would argue that you haven't paid for it. So, so th there is no cost, really, in terms of making this decision, because it's it's old, right? I'm talking about making decisions now, not the accounting cost, just the cost of making that decision. So the argument is, really, there is a cost, because we lose out, in effect, of being able to sell it for £3. So the cost, really, to us, by giving it to these guys, is that we lose out on this gain of 3,600. So that's the that's kind of a, a relevant cost, if you um, sorry um, pounds when it comes to selling and when it comes to using that 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 gravel. Then we also but we still need to buy in an 800 kilograms. That's not going away. And it says that we can buy them for six pound, and that is 4,800, bringing you to 8,400. So that's the full cost. So the issue really is to do with this idea of of um, the fact that there is no such thing as a free, it's not free, unless it was totally scrap scrap and there was nothing you can get for it, fair enough. But otherwise, um, you could sell it, so it's not free. So in terms of decisions, that is the full cost of of um, using 2,000 kilograms, which brings us to C. Question 227, um, it says that this business sells chairs for 34, and there's some issues here with the variable costing, that you've got a special order. And, it, and the question is, what's the contribution for this special order? Well, you're receive, you're going to receive 18, which is the revenue. So let's look at all the variable costs. All the variable costs, we have materials, 6, variable labor, 5, production overheads, variable, 3, variable selling costs, 1. Those are only the only variable costs live. 
there, and that comes to 15, which means the contribution is 3. So £3 contributing to overheads, and so the answer is A. We always exclude fixed costs. They're not involved in this whole um, discussion. Another similar question. This time it says you need a thousand kilograms. So it says you have six hundred kilograms. So if you, you if you take these and use them for this project, well you're going to have to replace them anyway. So it says that the company uses sand regularly and would need to replace any use on the job. So the relevant cost. So in effect, you know you can't say because it's already sitting there. No, because you're going to need it for this project, you will pretty much buy it and use it but you will replace it so technically the cost therefore becomes 600 kilograms times um, two, um what's the word four pound because you would have to replace it so this is about making decisions not the cost of the not the accounting cost of the project is four pounds and you would have to buy in an extra some, some more 400 kilograms as well times four pounds or you might as well just leave the sand alone there as it is and just buy yourself the 1000 kilograms you need for the project and that would have been 1000 times four anyway right you see where this is going so the key point is you can't just take sand and say i'm taking it and it's not going to cost me anything because someone else is going to have to pay for it so that comes to a cost of four thousand pounds and then let's see what's happening here it says here that you make Yes, you have two products here, um, product A and product B. So let's just analyze this carefully. I'm just going to do this over here, product A and product B. And product A sells for 10 and has a variable cost of 7. Product B has a selling price of 15 and has a variable cost of 9. Therefore, product A has a contribution of 3 and this has a contribution of 6. Now, it says the business has a thousand labor hours of spare capacity. Okay, wonderful. Each labor hour can produce three units of A. So if each labor hour can produce three units of A, that means that each labor hour can give us nine pounds for every labor hour. Right? So nine over one, if you like. For every labor hour, we can make nine pounds in terms of contribution. And each labor hour produces one unit of B. So literally, we will only have one unit of B, so each labor hour is will produce nine can produce nine pounds of contribution of A and only six of B. So therefore, for every hour of labor we are spending, we we use we get nine pound of A, but only six pound of B. So in terms of ranking, I will make A first on any given Sunday. The company should use the spare capacity to produce. So we have basically. Yes, I mean, I'm making £9 on every hour. I have 1,000 hours spare, so use it and produce yeah, straight away. 1,000 labor hours times 9 gives us 9,000. Do all of that, and that's actually the answer straight away. We can sift through the others very quickly. We can't produce B. There's no point because it's 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 weak. We, we can't do that because it just gives us a low contribution. The company should use the spare capacity to produce 3,000 more units as A has a lower selling price. That's not the reason why. It's not because of the selling price. It's because of the contribution. The contribution is greater per hour. That's why we're making A. So the answer there is A. And we have something similar here again. Um, let's look carefully at the actual contributions. So the contributions here are 10 minus 8. Right? 3 plus 4 plus 1 is eight so the contribution for pots is two and for kettles the contribution is 15 minus 12 is three and it's telling us that um, aluminium is in short supply right okay so we have to be careful so the question here is that well then how much aluminium are we using well it says that it's 50p per kilogram that's you buying the aluminium so it means that you're using six kilograms right because if it's 50p per kilogram and you're spending three pounds on it it means you're using six kilograms if it's four pounds it means you're using eight kilograms so if i want to see who's best what what the contribution is per kilogram in terms of ranking because that's the issue here who's giving me the best return per kilogram of aluminium so i have here um, 2 divided by 6, which is a third, so 0 0.3. And here I have 3 divided by 8, 
which is 0 0.375. So the kettle, making kettles gives me a much better, a much better return um, on the use of aluminium. So what should I do? Well, it says that we only have 1,320. So I'll go ahead and I'll make my kettles. The demand for my kettles are 150 kettles, and I need 8 kilograms to make each kettle. So therefore, 150 times 8 is 1,200. So I need 1,200 kilograms to make my kettles. And therefore, we have 1,320. So that means there's 120 kilograms left. And I can use these kilograms to make the pots. Well, each pot needs 6 kilograms, because I'm told. And therefore, I can make 20. Right? 120 divided by 6 is equal to 20. I can make 20 pots. I can make 20 pots. That's what's going on here. Cool. Great stuff. So that's, um, that's, that's, the, that's those questions up to there, and we'll carry on in the next video.